Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Coming to you live from John Stella Field at Brown Park in Omaha, Nebraska, we bring you a very critical North Star Athletic Association baseball doubleheader today and also tomorrow as the top two teams in the league meet to determine who's going to have the advantage with yet one more weekend to go in conference play. The home team, the Bellevue University Bruins, sit atop of the conference with a 15-1 and conference record, 30-11 and overall. They'll be taking on the second place team in conference, the Dakota State Trojans. The Trojans are 14 and 2 in conference and 31 and 10 overall. Mick Krupski back behind the microphone, joined today by Chris Williamson. Chris, we've got the makings of a real great ball game before us. Yeah, critical is the exact word that you use, and it's the perfect word. Um, this is a huge, this is by far the biggest series that these two teams have played all year uh, with what's at stake. Um, and they don't like each other. It, it was pretty well known uh, when Dakota State got off the bus. Uh, it's just a different feel down there on the field with, you know, walking around with the two teams. It's, you can just feel the tension between the two teams right now. Nobody's talking. There's not a, there's not that fun laughing that you, you that we've seen from Bellevue. They are taking this very, very serious and they're gonna be ready to go. Very similar situation last year as these two teams atop the standings and they came here to Brown Park and Dakota State won the first game of that series but then Bellevue came storming back and won the next three to win their conference championship. Bellevue has won the North Star regular season championship every year but one since 2016. Yeah, and that's, that's what Bellevue does. Um, but Bellevue has the advantage being up by a game already so um, for Dakota State to win the conference or have a chance to take the lead in the conference they got to win three out of these four games so Bellevue does have the advantage um, but at the same time this team is going to be very tough to beat they are very confident in themselves just watching them you know around on the field the way they're warming up the way they're doing in and out uh, they have a lot of belief in themselves that they can get this done so Bellevue's got to be ready to go if they can't start slow uh, Bellevue's got to jump and put runs up in the first inning, first couple innings, they got to score runs to make Dakota State fight from behind. When, when they get out in front, um, they're almost unbeatable. Both these teams are 7-1 and one in the month of April. Bellevue a perfect 15-0 and 0 at John Stella Field at Brown Park. Dakota State 19-6 and 6 in road games this year. The two teams, very similar stat lines. Perhaps the Bruins have a slight advantage hitting. The Dakota State Trojans a slight advantage pitching when it comes to batting average and earn run average. Yeah, when you're saying they're very similar, I mean, just the records, they're a game apart. Winning percentage, they're, you know, 756 to 732. Last 10, they're Dakota State's 9 and 1, Bellevue's 8 and 2. Um, batting averages are very similar for the teams. Bellevue's hitting 345, Dakota State's hitting 337. You know, everything is very, very similar across the board with these two teams. So it's going to be who makes the least amount of mistakes, whether that's on the mound and um, giving up free passes, making the routine plays, not letting guys take that extra base, but also taking advantage of those extra bases that you're given, putting pressure on the other team. Bellevue's got to put a lot of pressure on Dakota State. Um, yes, the record's very, very good. But in reality, they haven't beat a winning a team with a winning record all year. So, but that doesn't mean they're not good. Um, they don't have 31 wins on the year because of who they play. They are good. Um, so Bellevue's got to be ready to go because they're not going to go away. It's going to be a dogfight for all four games. The two head coaches meeting with the two-man umpire and crew at home plate right now. It'll be Tucker McHugh and Michael Andrick, the two umpires for today's game, talking now with Bellevue head coach Dwayne Monlux and Trojan head coach Darian Hardy. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game. First of all, the visiting team, the Dakota State Trojans. Leading off and playing left field, number 88, Jeremy Green. Batting second, the right fielder, number 18, Corey Brownson. Batting third, the catcher, number 38, Ryan McDaniel. The cleanup hitter for the Trojans is the center fielder, number 36, Walker Huntgren. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 27, Cassidy Watt. Batting sixth and playing first base, number 40, Ned Seklik. Batting seventh and playing second base, number four, Aiden Perry. 
Batting eighth, the third baseman, number 30, Dawson Portner. And batting ninth, the shortstop, number 22, Bubba Thompson. On the mound today for the Trojans, Sam Turpa. Turpa with a six win, two loss record on the season, a 3.72 earned run average. Again, the starting lineup for the Trojans batting order, Green, Brownson, McDaniel, Holtgren, Watt, Seklick, Perry, Portner, and Thompson. And they spot the third baseman, number 30. And now for the home team. For the Bellevue University Bruins on top of the North Star Athletic Association, leading off and playing center field, number 21, Jake Lacey. Batting second and catching the NAIA Player of the Week for last week, number 10, Logan Grant. Batting third, the shortstop, number 24, Brendan Luther. The cleanup hitter is the left fielder, number 36, Stephen Elsner. Batting fifth for the Bruins and playing right field, number 17, Anthony Lind. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number two, Tyler Monroe. Batting seventh and playing third base, number 31, Nick Grade. Batting eighth and playing first base, number 39, Ryan David. And batting ninth and playing second base, number seven, C.J. Townsend. On the mound today for the Bruins. Number 38, Dustin Shorey. Dustin at six wins and only one loss on the season, a 3.53 earned run average. So a matchup of two outstanding pitchers on the mound today for each team. Yeah, it's going to be a battle on the mound. And so these two offenses, it's going to whoever's going to uh, score first, I really think, is going to take a massive advantage in this game because you have two dominant arms on the mound that are just going to go after each other, and it should be a, a really fun seven innings in this first game. Bruins without the services of a couple of guys today due to injuries. The biggest loss for the Bruins is first baseman Alec Ackerman. Ackerman is out this whole weekend. He suffered an oblique injury last weekend against Mayville State. He's still in some pain. He hopes to be back in the lineup next week if possible. Also, Nick Gravel, the Bruins' backup middle infielder. He was hitting the ribs with a line drive last weekend as well, so he'll be out for this weekend. Two big losses for the Bruins. The biggest one is Alec. Uh, I mean, he's, he's their best player. He's their best hitter. So it's going to be what the rest of this lineup does. Uh, how they make up for his, the lack of production that he gives every single game. All right, time now for our national anthem. Nice, nice crowd on hand on this sunny Friday afternoon. Temperatures today expected to reach the mid-50s, so not a balmy day, about 10 degrees below average. It's normally about 65 degrees this time of the year in the Omaha Bellevue area, so a little cooler, but not too much of a breeze, a slight breeze out of the northwest, what means it's blowing from the left field to the right field side of the park. Let's set the Bellevue defense as we get ready for the top of the first inning. Across the infield, it'll be Ryan David getting the start at first base. C.J. Townsend at second. The shortstop back to his spot there is Brendan Luther after a couple of weeks of being injured. And at third base is Nick Grade. Across the outfield, Steven Elsner in left, Jake Lacey in center, and Anthony Lynn is in right. The battery for the Bruins behind the dish is Logan Grant. And on the mound, 
is right-hander Dustin Shorey. Dustin, at six and one on the season. Give us a little bit more information about the line of Dustin Shorey. I mean, he's he's the ace of the staff. It's plain and simple. That's why he's throwing game one. Um, he's fastball, slider, changeup, cutter. Nothing is straight with him. Um, he's got to get ahead of his of of the hitters right away. Uh, when he's at, when he jumps ahead, uh, he's very good to beat, or he's very hard to beat. Um, because then that way he can he can break out his changeup, he can throw his slider, he can throw his curveball, he can throw every pitch that he has in his arsenal, and if he can locate, uh, he's going to be extremely difficult. When he doesn't locate, when he's having a hard time feeling his mechanics, that's when he gets in trouble. That's when those big innings happen that we've seen in, that we've seen this year. Um, we've seen him have given up four or five runs in an inning this year. Now, granted, the team has the offense has helped him out uh, by putting up big runs in those in those innings um, so he hasn't it's never it's never come back to hurt him but if you ask him he's not he doesn't want those innings he 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 wants to throw shutouts every single time he's on the mound he'll have a big test today against these Dakota State Trojans Dustin six foot five 230 pounder he's a senior out of Chandler Arizona this is senior weekend for the Bellevue squad tomorrow will be senior day 17 players will be finishing up their eligibility will be honored after tomorrow's doubleheader. All right, let's get started with today's first game. Leading it off for the Dakota State Trojans, left fielder Jeremy Green. Green, the team leader, and runs batted in for Dakota State. He's in that leadoff spot. First pitch swinging, come back to right to Shorey. Dustin fields it, runs it halfway over to first. The toss over there. One pitch, one out. A good start for the Bellevue Bruins and pitcher Dustin Shorey. Yeah, you don't see that very often. Leadoff hitter to start the game swinging at the first pitch, especially if there's a fastball just on the outside corner. Um, not a very good pitch to swing at of uh, the first pitch spot, of the game. Right fielder. Corey. Next up for the Trojans, right fielder Corey Brownson. Thanks again for joining us on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network today. First pitch from Shorey, a fastball, outer half, called strike one. Brownson hitting 345 on the year. He's their leader in on-base percentage at 515. Also their leader in slugging percentage, 670 in that category. Chop foul over at the first base side, so Shorey working ahead. Nothing but strikes from the big right-hander. 0-2 the count. Yeah, that was a good slider, 0-1. Uh, kept him off balance. Let's see if he goes fastball away off the plate to set up his... Next pitch. Shorey will work exclusively from the stretch. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Tries to get Brownson to chase. He lays off now one and two the count. Bill, can you get the logos off the screen? Oh, sure can. There we go. I'll remember that <laughs> Here's the one-two pitch. Ooh, just missed somewhere. Shorey one of the pitch. Logan Grant wanted the call. Dwayne Mollex wanted the call. I have that look didn't look like Logan moved his glove. He, he was set up right on the outer third of the plate. I have no idea where that pitch missed. Two and two the count now on Corey Brownson. To second, a one hopper there. CJ Townsend. He feels it cleanly over to first. Two ground balls on the first two batters in the Trojan lineup. That'll bring to the plate the catcher, the leading hitter for the Trojans on the year, Ryan McDaniel. In the third spot. The catcher. McDaniel hitting 444, 67 hits on the season for the Trojan catcher. Trojans wearing their powder blue, baby blue, Columbia blue, whatever color you'd like to call that, with the jerseys and the white pants. The Bruins with their black jerseys and gray pants. Owen won the count. The first batter where Shorey has not started ahead. Righty, righty matchup here. Slider for the called strike, one and one. Shorey can reach low 90s with his fastball. Yeah, he sits usually 87 to 89. He can run it up to 91, 92 when he really uh, wants to, as there's another slider for a ball. So he's now down two and one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to be to see a fa uh, his two seam fastball on the inside corner right here, just for possibly. Uh, Nice little jam job, rolling, roll over. That's where Grant sets up the pitch over the outer half. And again, look pretty good spot, a tight strike zone to start for home plate umpire Michael Andrick. Now three and one, hitters count for Ryan Daniel. There 
There's a called strike on the inner half. Count goes full. Good location right there. Didn't want to give in, just throw a fastball over the middle plate. Great location on the inside corner. As a team, Dakota State hitting 337 on the season, 331 in North Star competition. They're averaging eight and a half runs per game. Full count pitch, two hopper to short. Handle over there by Brendan Luther. And three infield ground balls on a three up, three down, top of the first inning. After a half, the Trojans nothing, and the Bellevue Bruins coming to bat. Good start for Dustin Shorey. Great start by Shorey right there. Did a really good job of keeping the leadoff hitter off of the base. Um, that's going to be the guy. That's actually going to be a guy that they're going to want to keep off the bases. Uh, he's got 29 stolen bags this year, so he's going to put pressure on you when he gets on the base. So they got to keep him off the base paths and just keep getting weak contact like he did that whole inning. Heading to the mound for Dakota State, right-hander Sam Turpa. He'll get the nod in game number one. Let's set the Dakota State defense behind him. Across the infield, it's Ned Seklik at first base, Aiden Perry at second. The shortstop is Bubba Thompson, and the third baseman is Dawson Portner. Across the outfield, Jeremy Green is in left. Walker Hultgren is in center. And Corey Brownson is in right. The catcher for the Trojans is Ryan McDaniel. And Sam Turpa on the mound, a 6-2 and two record, a 3.72 earned run average. Chris, tell us a little bit more about Turpa. Yeah, he's one of the best on their staff. He's got 58 innings pitched. Uh, he's given up 46 hits, 30 runs, 24 of those earned, uh, 21 walks. He does have 74 strikeouts in those 58 innings, which that's a huge number in 58 innings. Um, teams are only hitting 214 off of him. Uh, it's going to be a tough battle today with this lineup. They gotta be jump. They gotta jump on the mistakes that he gives them. Um, he's a fastball slider guy, from what I've seen, um, and I know from the scouting reports that the coaching staff has done on on him. He's a lot of fastball slider. That's a big thing that we've worked on in practice this week. Was you know being able to recognize fastball slider. You know, at one point we had two machines out there uh, for BP going fastball slider, fastball slider, being able to recognize each pitch. So. Um, it's going to be a tough matchup for this lineup, especially without Ackerman. 54 degrees, our current temperature. Wind out of the northwest at about 14 miles an hour. So not the 80-degree temperatures we saw last weekend, but not the 30-degree temperatures we saw a few weeks ago. So pretty typical weather, a couple of degrees below normal for the mid-eastern part of Nebraska. Bellevue Bruins, we mentioned that the uh, Trojans are averaging eight and a half runs per game. The Bellevue Bruins, with their offensive onslaught over the last several weeks, averaging 9.4 runs per game. The Bellevue Bruins hitting 345 as a team on the season and 412 in North Star play. Again, if you missed our open, a couple of guys on the injured list this weekend. The biggest loss is Alec Ackerman out with an oblique injury. And Nick Gravel out with a rib injury. So who's going to pick up the slack for the Bruins? A lot of guys hitting above the 300 mark on the season. Here's one of them. Center fielder, Jake Lacey. Jake hitting 416. So not only above 300, he's above 400. He's been on a tear the last couple weeks uh, getting his average up. And he's, he, the production he's given this lineup has been outstanding, especially out of the leadoff spot. And in North Star play, Jake hitting over the 500 mark, 526. Swings and foul tips into the glove of the catcher. One ball, one strike to count on the Bruins' leadoff hitter. As long as they can recognize spin uh, and jump on the fastballs, because he's going to be, I feel like he's going to be a lot of slider, breaking ball dominant. That one's hit to the right side. Right fielder coming in, however, to cut it off at the pass and make the catch. That's Corey Brownson. Got a pretty good jump on that to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Next up for the Bruin, the guy who's got accolades from all over the country and then some, Logan Grant, the NAIA National Player of the Week. He's also the NAIA Ball Player of the Week and the Canadian Baseball Network Player of the Week as a guy from north of the border. So six home runs over the last week of play, 17 runs batted in. Not too bad a week, 619 as a batting <laughs> average. So let's see if Logan can continue that hot streak for uh, the pitch foul out of play opposite way. One ball, one strike to count on the Bruins catcher. 
Yeah, you can just see the confidence in Logan right now when he's at the plate is is extremely high. And you can see, I mean, just by the production. I mean, when you get production like that, you're going to be very confident. And Logan has power every part of the field. Most of his longest home runs have gone over the right field side, but he can also drive it to the left side. That one's fouled back, one and two the count. Logan, the team leader in home runs with 15, the team leader in runs batted in with 54 after that great last week. Turpa looks in, gets the signal, and delivers. Inside, Logan has to pull it up, two and two the count. Trojans playing Grant to pull on the infield. That one's bounced to the plate. Tank goes full. Pretty much straight up in the outfield. Payoff pitch upcoming. Sam yeah. Turpa versus Logan Grant. Curious if he's going to go slider since he went 2-2 two -two at that or if he's going to go back to the fastball. Gets the grip and delivers. Fastball popped up. Opposite way. That will get out of play. John Stella Field at Brown Park, 325 down the lines, about 380 to straightaway center field. The ball field fits in a natural bowl, surrounded on three sides by Hills and Tree. Logan Grant powers that one just off the side of the light pole in right field. He cheers along with his teammates as he heads down the first baseline. Logan Grant continuing the hot bat with the solo home run. Yeah, that was just a breaking ball that didn't do anything just sat over the middle of the plate and he did what he's been doing the last week and even last year first part of this year like he's been on a tear and uh that's a huge start for this bellevue lineup now 16 home runs and 55 runs batted in for logan bruins off to a 1-0 start just as you said in the open that's something the bruins would like to do in this entire series get ahead early and keep the pressure on. Here's the Bruins shortstop, Brendan Luther. Luther was nursing a hamstring injury the last couple of weeks. He did get some play in as a designated hitter, but now his first game back in a couple of weeks defensively in that shortstop spot. Luther hitting 405 on the year. Chopper on the ground to the right side. A diving stop by the first baseman. Toss over to first, and in time, to retire Brendan Luther. You can see that Brendan wasn't quite still at full speed with that injury, but a, a nice play by Ned Seklick, the first baseman, to get over there on the dive, and a nice play by Sam Turpa to cover pitcher's fielding practice. Yeah, he's he's not going to be full strength with a hamstring injury. It's going to take a while for it to get back to 100%. You know, with him playing every single week uh, and, you know, this postseason run that they want to be on, he's going to have to kind of fight through it and just see what he can do. Kind of temper it along the way. Yeah. Here's the Bruins cleanup hitter, left fielder, Steven Elsner. Breaking ball, misses low and away. Elsner with home run power as well. He's in double digits with 13 home runs and 48 runs batted in on the year. 357 batting average. Grant's home run moves him into the top 10 in the single season. Logan Grant's home run moves him into the top 10 for single season home runs for Bellevue Bruins. Breaking ball, Elsner lays off. Now two and one the count. Who's on top of that list, Bill? Uh, JT Patterson at 24 in 2019. JT Patterson with 24 home runs in 2019 tops in a single season home run for the Bruins. On the knees, a fastball for the called strike. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the first inning, Bruins up one to nothing, courtesy of the Logan Grant home run. Chopped on the ground to the left side. Shortstop fields it there. Bubba Thompson, a long throw across the field, picked up at first, and the side is retired. Six to three on that play. Bellevue picks up one run on one hit. There were no errors and nobody left on base. After one complete, the Bellevue one Bruins more. won, and the Dakota State Trojans nothing. Head to the top of the second. All right, those of you who are loyal Bellevue fans know we invite you to be part of our broadcast by sending along a text message to us. Dakota State fans, we invite you to join us as well. Send along a text message if you want to 402-515-7654. Let us know where you're listening, who you're rooting for, any particular players, any fun facts to share. 
I always like to know where people are listening in. We, we average usually between 300 and 500 listeners on our broadcast. So if you uh, feel you'd like to join us, again, that number is 402 515 We've got a couple in the queue. We've got our home baby from the Townsends live in Omaha this weekend as their two sons, CJ, plan second base and pitcher Brock. Brock will be honored tomorrow as part of Senior Day. And the Montana McMahons are watching and rooting on the Bruins. Thanks, you guys, for sending along that message. And I'm not sure what say helot means. But we got that text message, so we'll say. <laughs> All right, here we go with the top of the second inning. Cleanup hitter, center fielder, Walker Holtgren will lead it off for Dakota State. First pitch from Dustin Shorey, low ball one. Shorey can't relax in these innings. Uh, you know, yeah, he does only have a one run lead. He does have the lead, but he's got to put up zeros to keep that momentum, to keep Dickinson State down. Um, or excuse me, Dakota State. Outside corner, strike called, one and one the count. You know, this is, this is a very good chance for Shorey to get his first strikeout of the game. He does have 33 strikeouts on the year. Uh, does Walker so we'll see if he can't as there's a, that looked like a changeup almost um, kind of ran away slower than than everything else he's throwing kind of surprised he threw his changeup already uh, but it could be just for this one hit or two kind of a show me pitch there both teams having a good mix of both right-handed and left-handed batters in the lineup that fastball misses down low now three and one the count on Holtgren, leading off the top of the second inning. So far, it's been three up, three down for Dustin Shorey, trying to come back right now against Holtgren. Shorey shakes off the first signal, now has the one he wants from catcher Logan Grant. A little breaking ball, that's in the zone, you betcha. Count goes full. Mostly sunny day here in the Omaha area. A little on the cool side, but not bad. Temperature expected to stay in the mid-50s throughout both games of today's doubleheader. Payoff pitch, and you called it, Chris. The first strikeout of the game for Dustin Shorey. Took a little something off that. Yeah, it was a break, another breaking ball. He went 3-1 slider. He went back to that slider location. It looked like Logan was set up in, uh, so it looked like he wanted to go more in, but Excellent. more. it ended up being like a backdoor slider on the outside corner, and it paid off. The five-hole hitter for the Trojans, the designated hitter, Cassidy Watt. Watt, open batting stance. First pitch popped up towards shallow center field. Luther, the shortstop, going out. Elsner, the left fielder, kind of that drops between three players. And hustling into second base is Cassidy Watt. A little bit of a breeze. The left side right now is the sun field, I think. It was Elsner who called for it and then kind of lost it, and it's going to be an E7 on yeah, the play. That, I mean, Elsner's got to understand that Luther is standing directly under the baseball just because you can get there. If he's already there, just let him take it. You know, that's a free out. Now, uh, oh. Shorey's got to come right back and get this next guy out. He, we can't let that give up a run. A rare defensive miscue for the Bruins. Bellevue with 973 fielding percentage on the year. But now with Watt at second base, the first runner in scoring position for Dakota State as first baseman Ned Seklik steps to the plate. Yeah, here's another strikeout possibility. He's got 34 on the year. So short, this would be a huge time for a strikeout uh, to keep that guy at second base with only one out. Shortstop Brennan Luther trying to keep Watt close to the base as possible. Little slider that time again in the zone. Now one and one the count. I think, I, I think Nick told me one time. Seklik hitting 357 on the year for Dakota State. Google it. Shorey comes set at about chest level. Looks the runner back not once, but twice, and now Time called by the 
base umpire, that's a, sh a pitching clock, viol almost said shot clock violation, <laughs> pitching clock violation. So that'll be a ball, now two and one. You get 20 seconds to deliver the pitch. The base umpire is the man responsible for keeping time. Now he'll reset it. So Dustin took just a, just a second too long with that second look to keep the runner close. Tries to go to the outside corner, but misses wide. Now three and one again. Let's see if Dustin can come back a second time on a 3-1 count. Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see that slider that he's been throwing the last couple times, 3-1 when he's down in the count. That's the pitch he's gone to so far. You are correct, and it's in the zone now, full count. On Ned Seklik. Again, last time he went 3-1 slider, he came right back with the 3-2 slider. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it, um, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see an inside fastball right here either. Swing and a miss. So you're just a prophet today, Chris. Second strikeout. Both of them called by Chris. As Shorey trying to pick up his teammates. Now two out and a runner at second base for second baseman Aiden Perry. You know, as he gets later on in the game, he's going to have to change that tendency. So far, he, when he gets down, he goes to that slider. They're going to pick up on that. So um, at some point, he's going to change that up. Just don't need to do it right now. Here's the first pitch. Swung on and missed. Again, looked like a possible change there. Just kind of down and away from the left-handed hitter. Yeah, it's, it's either he's got a lot of movement on his fastball today or he's throwing cha more change-ups than usual. Again, the set and the look. And now the pitch. Pop foul out of play, 0-2 the count. Hey, I want to say thank you to Dakota State athletic trainer Haley Lindbergh. She's the one that helped me with the pronunciations and went down there while the team was taking their batting practice and infield practice. So tip of the cap to Haley for her help with the pronunciations today. 0-2, let's see if Shorey wastes one here. Goes right at the batter, Perry. Yeah. Fouled out of play. Good location, fastball up. Uh, he was able to foul it off. Now I wouldn't be surprised to see a slider on that back foot to try and get a swing and miss. Eight and one of four, maybe five guys on the Dakota State roster with the first name Aiden. That's got to be hard as the coaching staff when you need yeah. Aiden. <laughs> you got four people looking. Breaking ball comes in the back door for the called strike three. That's a great pitch right there. Uh, outside, like you called it on the back, back door breaking ball, as I, if I can speak. Uh, back door breaking ball just on the outside corner. And he didn't, he wasn't even looking for it. I think he was looking for another fastball and froze him. It was a fantastic pitch right there by Shorey. So not one, but two, but three strikeouts on the inning for Dustin Shorey. As Dakota State, no runs, no hits, one air, one left on base. One and a half, Bruins one, and the Trojans nothing. <laughs> Say hello to Gary and Shabon Luther, who are at the game today. Will do. Coming down from Canada to be part of this weekend's festivities. TGOD with cross swords and a blue heart from Madison, South Dakota, the home of Dakota State University. I'm an old guy. I don't know exactly what that means, but <laughs> what the heck? I, I don't know what that means either. I don't know what that means. Go Bears! Shout out to Ryan David from Russell Middle School in Omaha. I didn't know that's where Ryan went. This is his mom and her 25 sixth graders listening in today. All right, how you guys doing? Taking some time off the school day to enjoy some baseball. Good luck to Russell Middle School students as summer vacation gets ever closer. You have a great teacher for letting you listen to baseball while you're in school. When we were little kids and the World Series was on, we used to smuggle transistor radios <laughs> under our shirts and put a little earplug and then lean on it. So, See, but you did that so you didn't get caught. This yeah, she's, she's out, here she's out there publicly. Guys, we ain't doing anything today. Let's listen to baseball. Uh, all right, Mrs. David, thank you for doing that. Here's Anthony Lynn to lead off the bottom of the second inning for the Bellevue Bruins. Anthony is a guy whose bat has become hot over the last several weeks as well. Anthony hitting 431 in conference play, 353 overall on the season. Hit him to the ground to third base. Glove there by Dawson Portner. His throw on time across the diamond, 5-3 to three on the play. Next up for the home team, the designated hitter, 
Tyler Monroe. At the sixth spot for BU, the designated hitter. Tyler, I was going to be surprised to see Tyler taking this first pitch no matter what. Um, you really don't want to get to the third hitter of the inning on two pitches. Um, now, I don't think Coach Monlock's game the take side, but he's got to be able to understand as he does take the first pitch for a ball. But you got to be able to understand you can't get to that third hitter on just two pitches. And I want to apologize to Tyler. Last week I called him Nick Gravel a couple of times. They're both similar they builds. Swing and a miss on that high fastball. Yeah, they do look very, very similar. Like, even their actions, the way they run, the way they swing, the way they throw, they are very similar players. Here's the 1-1 one pitch. Off the outside edge, now 2-1. and one. Russell Middle School, part of the Millard Public School District. That one's hit hard. A nice play by the second baseman, then falls down. And the speed of Tyler Monroe gets him to first base. And that'll be scored a base hit. A nice job there by Aiden Perry to get a glove on it. But as he was going to the backhand side, he stumbled a little bit, then lost the handle. And so the Bruins have their first base runner besides the solo home run in the person of Tyler Monroe. Yeah, it was hit really hard. It almost looked like it took a backwards hop on him, which you don't see very often on turf. And so when he fielded it, he got his glove on it. He actually fielded it. But when he went to play and throw, it looked like his, his cleats stuck into the turf. The next Bruin batter, third baseman, Nick Grade. Hit in the air to right center field. Second baseman going back. Right fielder coming in. It'll be the second baseman, Perry, who will call for it and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. All right, all you guys and gals at Russell Middle School, next up for the Bellevue Bruins, first baseman, Ryan David. Yeah, whatever production, I know he hasn't had a lot of playing time this year, but whatever production he can get, he can there. give this Bellevue lineup will be huge because obviously he's David. replacing Alec. And those are huge shoes to fill. Um, no one's expecting him to produce the way Alec does, um, but he's a guy who can hit a baseball a very long ways. Um, watching him in BP is pretty impressive. Chases after the first pitch up in the zone, strike one called. Two for 10 on the season is Ryan David. He does have a couple of Runs batted in, does have a hold and run as well in his limited play this year. First year as a Bellevue Bruin. Turpa from the set position. That one's lined hard to center field, but right at the center fielder. Walker Hultgren didn't have to move but a step or two. Hit well, but the Adam ball retires the side no runs on one hit there were no errors and one man left on base two innings in the book it's the Bellevue Bruins one the Dakota State Trojans nothing in this battle for the top spot in the North Star Athletic Association yeah that was a very smash baseball he hit it really 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 hard the center fielder just moved in three steps to catch it it was just like he was playing catch uh, so if he continued to if if Ryan can continue to have swings like that throughout this series um, they're going to fall uh, he just needs to keep that approach of hitting it up the middle and putting good swings on the baseball one more text in the queue watching from Billings Montana we're glad that you are with us quite a few big sky country players in today's game That number once again, if you'd like to join us on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network, 402-515-7654. Thanks to everybody who's sent in their messages so far. Dustin Shorey back to the mound for his third inning of work. Bellevue has scored 10 runs or more for the Trojans, third base. in eight of their last 10 games, including a 33-2 victory at Waldorf. A couple of times over the 20 mark last weekend against Mayville State. The batter for the Trojans leading off the top of the third inning, third baseman Dawson Portner. Portner, 306 hitter on the year. 1-1 one, one the count. Par 
partly sunny, partly cloudy day in the Omaha area. We'll expect that throughout the doubleheader. Maybe more clouds building as the day goes on. That pitch over the outer half for a strike two call. Yeah, look for another slider right here. Another good strikeout opportunity. Dustin has 28 strikeouts on the year. So um, Dust Shorey's been really good at, you know, taking advantage of those guys with high strikeout numbers. Popped up right side. Ryan David goes near the fence, and it'll be about five feet beyond his grasp. So the count will remain one and two on Dawson Portner. Yeah, that was another slider. It wasn't great with a one-two count. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it again. Just a different location, you know, more down in the zone, breaking down out of the zone to get him to chase. Again, these two teams very similar in terms of overall records. Bellevue 30 and 11, Dakota State 30 and 10. Shorey delivers. Hit on the ground into the hole. Brennan Luther will get a slide, but he can't come up with it. So Dawson Portner starts off the inning with a ground ball base hit. Again, that was that another slider, but right now his location with that slider is not great. Uh, it's not down the way he wants it to be. So he's got to figure out how to make that adjustment to get that breaking ball more down in the zone rather than leading in the zone, especially when he's in a good uh, one-two count like that. Here's the nine-hole hitter for Dakota State, the shortstop, Bubba Thompson. Let's see if Dakota State might be bunning with their nine hole guy here trying to advance the base runner. Throw over to first base. Thompson doesn't show anything at the plate. 205 is his batting average on the season. Top of the order awaits on deck. First hit of the game for Dakota State in the last batter. That one's hit. Opposite way, C.J. Townsend able to slide there and knock it down, but he can't control it, so back-to-back -back base hits. Neither of them hit real hard, but they found spots, and that's the name of the game. Hit it where they ain't. Yeah, that's a good job by the bottom of the order for Dakota State to get the first two guys on, getting it back to the top of your order. Now I wouldn't be surprised if they bunt here no matter what. Um, you might see a drag bunt at first, uh, and then to try and get bases loaded, or uh, you will see a sacrifice, I'm assuming, at some point in this at bat to get the runners to second and third with one out. The at bat belongs to Jeremy Green who grounded out on the first pitch of the game. Right back to pitcher Dustin Shorey. Shows butt, puts it down right back to Shorey. He's come off the mound. He'll take the only play available at first base. So a successful sacrifice bunt for Jeremy Green. One to three on the put out at first base as Portner and Thompson move up 90 feet each. Yeah, you saw that was coming. Um, with how important this game is, how important runs are, uh, even though it is only the third inning, you want to get a, as many run opportunities as you can. Next up for the Trojans, right fielder Corey Brownson. Brownson also grounded out his first time up. Chopper. C.J. Townsend will charge, a run from third will score on the put out at first base. Credit Corey Brownson with a run batted in as Dawson Portner comes across home plate. Our score now one to one. Yeah, good job by Dakota State right there, just manufacturing a run to tie the game. Now it's, it's a big at bat right here to keep it either tied or Dakota, to sta Dakota State taking the lead right here. So Troy's got to come up big right here and make some big pitches. Ryan McDaniel, the next batter for the Trojans. He, too, a ground-out victim his first time up. First pitch fastball ties him up on the swing, 0-1. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a location that can beat him on a regular basis. Uh, you know, that's how they beat him in the first at-bat. He doesn't look very comfortable with pitches going in. Swing and a miss. 0-2 the count. Yeah, McDaniel didn't look real comfortable on that swing no, either. Kind of lost his lost his balance at the plate. Yeah, he's looking for something in right now, and looks like he's going to go slider away right here. Chopped on the ground. Luther, backhanded play at short. Long throw across the diamond, but not in time. The speed of Ryan McDaniel earns him a run batted in and a base hit. Again, three balls that were just kind of hit in perfect spots. On the inning, result in two runs for Dakota State. But again, that Shorey's not executing his breaking ball right now, his slider. 
Uh, when he's ahead in the count, he's not executing it the way he needs to be. So he's got to figure out how to get better execution out of that pitch. Courtesy runner coming in for the Trojan catcher is number six, Seth Altwine. And at the plate, Walker Holtgren. So Dakota State takes a one-run lead with a two-spot in this top of the third inning. Fastball outer half on the corner for the called strike one. Again, in these double headers, game number one, a seven-inning scheduled game. Game two, a nine-inning game. So it's important to get that early lead. As Holtgren awaits the next pitch. Throw a first base runner with a short lead. Back easily. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take off at some point in this at bat. He does have 12 stolen bases on the year. So it might be some point, whether it's this pitch or next pitch, that he'll be taking off. Swing and a miss. Again, something off speed there from Dustin. Ahead in the count, 0-2. Yeah. to join in. Holtgren, a strikeout victim, his first time up today against Shorey. Gave him a couple skittles. Dustin comes to his set position and delivers a swing and a miss on the curveball. The fourth strikeout of the game for Dustin Shorey, but Dakota State picks up two runs on three hits. There were no errors and one man left on base in the top of the third inning. The Trojans two and the Bruins one as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, a good job by Dakota State right there, uh, scratching out two runs uh, on pitches that they were down in the count and they just put the ball in play. You know, that's what you got to do when you're down in the count, just put the ball in play. They ended up being, like you said, they ended up being in the perfect spot. Not a single ball left the infield, and they scored two runs. Um, so that's what you got to do in these type of games. Sam Turpa heads back to the pitcher's mound as he gets ready for his third inning of work, now with the one-run lead. Both these pitchers, Sam Turpa and Dustin Shorey, with six wins on the season. Six and one for Shorey, six and two for Turpa in this 2024 baseball season. You know, Dick, Dakota State got some production out of the bottom of their lineup for that inning. Now let's see if uh, Bellevue can do the same thing here, getting it back to the top of the order uh, to try and get that lead back. For the Bruins in the bottom of the third, it'll be CJ Townsend. Jake Lacey and Logan Grant, the first three scheduled hitters. CJ had over a 20 game hitting streak earlier in the season. So let's see if he's got some hits left in his bat the for the remainder of the season. CJ Townsend. Right now, Logan Grant has the longest batting streak for any Bruin. 15 game hitting streak for the Bruin catcher. First pitch down on Townsend. So far, Bellevue's doing a really good job at recognizing breaking ball and fastball and laying off the breaking ball and uh, putting good swings on the fastball. CJ over the 300 mark. 303 on the season. That one's popped up to the outfield. Center fielder Walker Holtgren will take charge of that one in the gap. He'll make the catch for the first out of the inning. You can tell from that pitch, the wind blowing from the left side to the right side. Holtgren had to keep going over to the right field side to make that catch. 14 miles an hour, but occasional gusts up over 20 miles an hour. Looking out the flag right now, we're in one of those gusts. As Jake Lacey will step to the plate. Jake lined out to right field his first time up. Little chopper, right side. Handled by the second baseman, Aiden Perry. And quick two outs in this bottom of the third inning. Let's see if Logan might take a couple of pitches that's here. To just give about to say, that's not like Logan to take a few, but he's also a smart enough hitter to it that he knows that, hey, he's only thrown three pitches so far. I'm going to have to see some. Uh, but also, I wouldn't be surprised if he swings at the first pitch because that's how, the way he's been swinging it, um, that's just what he does. Hottest hitter in the Bruin lineup over the last couple of weeks. 
Here's the pitch from Turpa. Logan lays off that pitch up high, ball one. John Stella Field at Brown Park. John Stella, longtime South Omaha baseball guy as Turpin delivers. That one's hit on the ground to the right side. A dive by the first baseman comes up empty, but a nice play by Perry at second base to follow it up and get it over to Turpa covering first. So a nice defensive play there. Credit Aiden Perry with going a long way to glove it. And then the pitcher, Sam Turpa, they get over there and cover it up. So a three up, three down, top of the, excuse me, bottom of the third inning for the Bruins. After three complete, it's Dakota State two and Bellevue one. Yeah, that was a heck of a play, you know. First baseman dove, missed it. Second baseman came in right behind him, slid, able to make a pretty good play and a good throw to, per to the pitcher covering first base. John Stella, as I mentioned, a South Omaha legend. Basically, he was a guy who played his high school ball here at Brown Park and after a stint in the military, came back to Omaha, played at Omaha University, now the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Was drafted by the San Francisco Giants after a short stint with them. Came back to Omaha and spent many years coaching at South High School in both the spring school season and summer legion program. Helped the most recent renovation of this park. And just a generally, you know, all those people you meet in your life. And, man, what a nice guy he is. Unfortunately, John passed away back in December. So we keep his memory alive and say thanks, John for all the work that you did promoting baseball in the Omaha area. Yeah, I never had a chance to meet with him very often. You know, I, I have met him a few times. Uh, so I obviously know way more about him than I do. I'm not from Nebraska, so um, only what I know is what you tell me every week on the broadcast. <laughs> so, um, but it's everything that I've heard, you know, talking to him a, a little bit, uh, he was very, I mean, obviously he's got a field named after him, so I mean, He's, he's a pretty big part of this community. I bring his name up every every week because people listening in for the first time, they see John Stella Field at the bottom of their screen and wonder, who's John Stella? Now you know. I was enjoying meeting him at the grocery store. We live fairly close to each other. He'd shout across, Mickey, <laughs> across the grocery <laughs> store. Like, hey, John, how are you? Here we go at the top of the fourth inning. Designated hitter Cassidy Watt will lead it off. Called strike one. You know, troy has got to do a much better job at when you're ahead in the count executing those pitches that need to be executed uh, for strikeouts or weak ground balls for outs. Another breaking ball there, a nice slider sweeping across the zone, 0-2 the count. Watt reached his first time up on that air on left fielder Steven Elsner, a little miscommunication, and he was stranded there. Another breaking ball must have been down just a little bit. Logan Grant liked the location for the count. Now one and two. Yeah, Dustin just asked if it was down. The umpire said, yeah. Uh, you know, from up here, I, it's hard to tell up and down from up here. Uh, so I have to take what the umpire says. We never argue with the umpires, do we? <laughs> that pitch up and away, two and two. Hey, I want to say thanks to Logan Grant's mom. She brought a basket of goodies with her as she came this weekend. A couple of Canadian flags, and uh, yeah, just uh, not going to be, oh, that all looks awfully good from north of the border. Breaking ball again, down just a little bit. Home plate umpire's been consistent. It's been kind of a tight zone, but now three and two from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Dustin can't really nibble here. Let's see if he goes right at him. And again, a pitch just off the zone. We have to assume it must be down a little bit because it's got coverage over the plate. Logan Grant talking with home plate umpire Michael Andrick now. Yeah, Coach Monlux just came out of the dugout and kind of gave a look at the umpire. Uh, so they're not right. They're not very happy right now with the zone that's going on. Ned Seklik, the next batter for Dakota State, the first baseman, a strikeout victim his first time up today. Off the outside edge. Dustin, a 7.2 strikeout per nine innings, so just under one strikeout per inning on the season. He's got four to his credit already to get today. A long look in. Now he'll step off. 
there's been a lot of shaking going on. So it's either him and Coach Malley or him and Logan. They're not on the same page right now. Sure, he's doing a lot of shaking to get the pitches that he wants. Throw over the first base, a runner back in time. Pitching coach Sean Malley will signal in electronically. They have a little communication device. Logan wears that inside his helmet. You can see a little antenna sometimes poking out from underneath his crown. Pitcher does have the right or the option to shake it off if he wants, but probably don't want to do it too often. Otherwise, you'll get a talking to when you come back into the dugout. Yeah, I'm sure, and I'm sure they have been talking these first three innings about, you know, what kind of pitch you want, where do you want to go, you know, what's feeling good. So, uh, so he's just got to do a much better job of communicating that with, with uh, Coach Malley. 1-1 one, one pitch off the outside corner, now 2-1. and one. Let's see if maybe if we have some action on the bases. Yeah, they do things different. They don't give actual signs. They call out numbers. Um, so and every player has a wristband that they're wearing the wrist, belt, you know, keep in their back pocket. That one's hit to the left field side. Steven Elsner giving chase at the warning track, and Steven will pull it in. Nice job defensively there by the Bruin left field to cover some territory and make the catch for the first out of the inning. Yeah, that was one of the first hard hit balls that Shorey's given up. You know, it was just fastball over the middle of the plate, and he did a really good job of hitting it to left center field. Elsner did a fantastic job running that thing down. Shorey gives a nod out to his left fielder to thank him for making that play. Here's second baseman Aiden Perry. Perry made a couple of nice plays last inning with his glove, trying to do something with his bat right now. Wide open stance, closes up. Over to first base. Lead out at second base. Back to first is not in time. A nice play by first baseman Ryan David to make the pick and a solid throw to second base. Three to six to retire Cassidy Watt. Aiden Perry reaches on the fielder's choice. So yeah. now two outs in the inning. Good job by Ryan and Luther just making sure that they secure that first out at second base. You know, in plays like that, getting that first out at second base is the important one. The double play is a bonus. Uh, but securing that first one is, is a really good job. Now they have two outs with only a guy on first. Dawson Portner, the next batter for Dakota State. Yeah, especially for first baseman, you're holding the base runner on. Quick throw behind the runner. Not in time. Ryan Davids holding the base runner, so as the pitch is on his plate, Ryan's going to break. He's actually in front of the baseline, so he's only probably about 85 feet away from home plate to pick it and then make an accurate throw. A little skew ball shot. C.J. Townsend can't quite get there. So another ball not hit very hard, but it finds a spot. Perry will stop at second base, so runners at first and second with two away, and that'll bring to the plate shortstop Bubba Thompson. Yeah, Choi's right now, I think he's got to mix something. He's got to throw more fastballs in. He's got to mix something up, because right now they're just putting just enough good swings on his breaking ball and his slider uh, to get just enough contact. Yeah, there's been one hit, hard hit ball, and that was for an out. Every hit that they have so far in this game, it's weak contact right in the right spot, and that's baseball. You know, you can't really complain about that, but... Uh, he's got to do a much better job of breaking out some more fastball, you know, mixing it up a little bit. Breaking ball down low, ball one. How frustrating is that for you as a former pitcher when that happened to you? It's frustrating because you feel like you're making good pitches, but at the same time, obviously they're not good enough. So you've got to make that adjustment. It is frustrating. It's very frustrating. I'm like, man, what do I have to do to get these guys out? Uh, but it's just part of baseball. Sometimes you get hit really, really hard for outs. There's a nice fastball. You know, one and one. And sometimes you, the ball, you know, doesn't leave the infield, and you, you have three <laughs> hits. Dustin staring into Logan Grant for the next signal. Has it. And again comes set. Again, the throw behind to first base. Not in time. Logan Grant not afraid to try to throw behind the base runners for a pickoff play. One ball, two strikes to count now on the batter, Bubba Thompson. Yeah. Thompson, one of those guys with a single, a well-placed single, his first time up. That's something that, you know, the catchers, all of the catchers work on almost on a regular basis and practices, back picking, uh, trying to get a free out, steal it out here and there. Little chopper up the third base line, but that's going to be a couple feet in foul territory. Nick Grade 
gloves it, but we'll do it all over again. One ball, two strikes to count on the Trojan shortstop. You know, he, he should throw a slider right here, but it's got to be down. It's got to be down and a little bit off the plate a little bit. So he, that would be my suggestion right here. Or if he doesn't want that, he's got to go fastball. And my guess with where he's sitting at in the box, he's going to go slider outside to try and run out of bat. C.J. Thompson holding the runner close at second base. Foul back to the net. So kind of a big hole right side if Thompson can direct one that way. As a pitcher, how cognizant are you to maybe try to work inner half so he doesn't try well, to flare one that way? Yeah, I mean, you can't really, you can, but it is also you got to pitch to the hitter. You can't pitch to your defense. You got to pitch to the hitter. So, um, Great location right there. Again, I don't know where that's at. I don't know where that's missing. Obviously, Coach Monlux doesn't know where that's missing either. He's out there talking to the umpire again. Um, so they don't want to swing at that. It sounds like he's saying it was off the plate. That's hard to see from up here. We're blocked from the whole plate, but that was a great spot by Shorty. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one definitely misses wide, so now the base runners will have a running start on this pitch to home plate. Dustin hoping to throw his best pitch of the game right here, top of the order on deck for Dakota State. Bruins trying to end this half inning on this pitch. Thompson awaits. Shorey delivers. And we'll do it again as that one's fouled right over the top of the backstop. Out of play. You know, I would almost start, if he wants to throw that slider, you know, with him so far in the box, uh, middle of the box, not on the plate, I should say, He's more of the middle of the box, you know, away from the plate. Start that slider over the plate. Start it on the middle of the plate and let it break on the outside corner. Um, right now it looks like when he does throw it, he's starting it on the outer third and it's running off, which is making it, you know, a ball according to the umpire. Full count pitch. Before we get there, the throw to second base. Alertly Aiden Perry back to the bag. Perry the runner at second. Portner the runner at first. Thompson at the plate for Dakota State. Bellevue 15 and 1 in conference play. Dakota State 14 and 2. A battle of the top two teams in the conference. None of the other five teams with an above 500 record. Runners go. Chopped on the ground to Luther at short. He'll have to go to first base. And he gets it there on time to retire Bubba Thompson. So the Bruins get out of the inning. No runs on one hit. No errors and two men left on base after three and a half. The Trojans 2. And the Bruins okay. won. Dwayne Thompson, uh, Dwayne Monlix going out to talk to the home plate umpire just to check again some of those close pitches. A very gentlemanly conversation. Well, I mean, Coach Monlix isn't going to yell at an umpire unless it's necessary. Uh, he won't get ejected from a game. I, I don't think he has since he's been here. Maybe once, if I recall. But... Uh, he's not going to say anything that's going to get him, you know, drastically in trouble with an umpire because that's only going to hurt the team. You know, the umpire could take it out on the rest of the players if, you know, Coach Monlux is yelling, barking the entire time in his ear. But I think it was just more of, hey, those look pretty good. Where are those at? Um, from my angle, just kind of getting an idea of what the umpire is seeing. Uh, but also, he's also listening to, you know, Logan behind the plate and Shorey on the mound that are seeing the same thing the umpire is seeing, and they want those for strikes. Bruins will send the middle part of the order to the plate in the bottom of the fourth inning. Brendan Luther, Stephen Elsner, and Anthony Lind, the first three scheduled hitters for the Bruins. Bruins one run on the solo home run by Logan Grant in the first inning. Dakota State picked up their two runs on three singles and a fielder's choice in the third. Halfway through this seven inning contest, the caveat being that if we are tied after seven innings and have to go extra innings, if it goes nine innings, then the second game will become a seven inning contest. Haven't seen that happen yet this year, but a change in the innings played for the North Star Athletic Association this year. Here's a Bruin shortstop, Brendan Luther. Brendan grounded out his first time up.
off the outside edge on the first pitch from Sam Turpa. Again, our text message number if you want to join us, 402-515-7654. Opposite field. He doesn't know where it's at. Tracked, however, by the left fielder. Jeremy Green will make the catch for the first out of the inning. You know, Tripper's doing a fantastic job of just going on the attack with these with this lineup. Um, you know, in three innings so far, he's only thrown 31 pitches. Now he's he's up to 33 pitches in three innings and a third inning, or a third. So right now he's on the attack. Everything is very minimal. Bellby's jumping at, you know, early in the count, putting the ball in play right now. But right now they're not getting anything to show for it. Here's Steven Elsner. Breaking ball misses away. First year as a Bellevue Bruin for Steven Elsner, San Francisco native. Awaits the next pitch from Sam Turpa. That one's sky high to the right side. Right fielder, Corey Brownson settling underneath it. And two away. Again, they're not swinging at bad pitches. They're not chasing anything out of the zone. They're they're sitting on that fastball. They're taking the breaking ball mostly, and they're sitting on that fastball. And when they see that fastball that's over the plate, they're putting good swings on it. They're just not hitting the middle of the baseball. So you can't really be that upset. Their approach is really good. They're just not getting any anything to show for it other than a home run. Maybe just a little bit of late movement on the pitch, keeping it off the barrel of the bat. Here's Bellevue right fielder Anthony Lind. Seven consecutive Bruins have been retired by Turpa. Starts Anthony with a breaking ball for a called strike one. Anthony, the local Omaha kid, played his high school ball at Omaha Central High School. One and one now the count. Anthony late on that fastball. Anthony steps back in. Foul out of play right side. Count remains at one and two. Anthony was a second team all-conference player last year. Lays off that pitch off the outside edge. Quite a few of the guys on the diamond today for both the Bruins and the Dakota State Trojans making first or second team all-conference players last year. Chopped off the body. First team all conference players last year Logan Grant, Nick Grade, Jake Lacey, Dustin Shorey, and Blake Crippen for the Bellevue Bruins. Way wide on that pitch. And for the Dakota State Trojans, Walker Holtgren, Sam Turpa, and J.D. Kirchner. Here's the payoff pitch. Anthony lines it to center field. Center fielder going back, still going back. That's over his head off the base of the wall. A solid stand-up double. Now Anthony turns on the Jets. He's going to head to third. John Stella Field, a very hard park to hit triples in, but Anthony with his speed and location of that hit Standing there now with two outs. Yeah, it was a line drive hit Thanks directly over the center fielder's head off the center of the wall. When it hit, it kind of got away from him a little bit. And I don't think the center fielder knew where it was right away because he ran into the fence. And uh, Lynn did a f fantastic job of not even slowing up going to second base. He just he was thinking triple, you know, out of the box. Second triple of the year for Anthony as the Bruin batter, the DH, Tyler Monroe. Strike one call on the outside black. Monroe with the single, his first time up today. Would love to do it again. Dakota State playing him to pull.
Again, a call on the outside black. Sh uh, uh, <laughs> Shorty hasn't gotten one of those calls, I'll be honest with you. Uh, those look in between the box and the plate, and Shorty hasn't gotten a single one of those pitches. Here's the 0-2. That one's line. Get down. Get down. It does. Tyler Monroe with an RBI single. Hit it off the end of the bat, but hit in a good spot. We've been saying that all day long for both teams. And Anthony Lynn scores to make it a 2-2 game. Nice job by Tyler Monroe to not get frustrated by those two pitches, maybe wide of the zone, and line that one right back where it came from. Yeah, that's great job. Just really good at bat. Just Again, just putting the, base, putting the bat on the baseball to see what happens you know you hit it you have a hard hit triple and just a flare in the center field for a base hit here's Bruin third baseman Nick Gray popped in the air to the right side let's see if the wind affects it very much looks like it's not right fielder Corey Brownson will make the catch just inside the line and the side is retired. The Bruins pick up one run on. And on that note, I got to go get my kids. All righty. Chris, <laughs> so, thanks again for coming today. So uh, it's this is it's fun. I wish I could be here all four games, but got to get the kids and then I got to work and all that stuff. So I'm um, able to do this for a little bit today at least. So we always this is, appreciate this is your insight. Series, this is one series I really wanted to do, but unfortunately life happens and I can't. So uh, but hopefully Bellevue can uh, keep tacking on those runs and. Uh, pull out the series all right well no you'll we'll, you'll be listening in yes. as you go yes, so I will all right Chris Williamson former Bellevue pitcher now volunteer assistant coach Fremont Nebraska police officer and dad all those things not necessarily in that order Bellevue athletic director Ed Lahotak joining us crew of knuckleheads up here in the press box as we get ready for the top of the fifth inning two to two again our score some of the guys that made the North Star second team last year include Trad Richardson for the Bruins, Anthony Lynn for Bellevue, and Jeremy Green for Dakota State. Those are the guys that still are playing baseball for their respective schools as we get ready for the top of the order. Left fielder Jeremy Green will start things off. Dustin Shorey back to work. Both these starters trying to get a complete game to give their team the best shot at winning. First pitch, a call strike one on the knees. Green ground out on comebackers. Both his two plate appearances today. Tries to check his swing, but can't do it. Now 0-2. Shorey's been pretty effective with that fastball running in on the right hand of batters. We saw a great example of it right there. Grant sets up outer half of the 0-2 pitch. Bounced up there, now one and two. Bellevue trying to remain perfect at John Stella Field at Brown Park. 15 and 0 their record. Shorey again delivers. Foul lot of play up the right side, up near W Street. Brown Park baseball field located at about 17th and U Street. That'll get you to the parking lot anyway. The park covers several city blocks. Green just gets a piece of that one to stay alive. Count remains one and two. Home plate umpire will walk it out to Shorey, giving Logan Grant a little time to recuperate. That one got a little piece of the catching wrist of Grant, so he'll get a couple of extra seconds of rest. It's just a nice gesture that the camaraderie between catchers and umpires. Breaking ball, and the check swing is not checked. And the strikeout is the fifth of the game for Dustin Shorey. Green couldn't hold up. Barrel bat definitely went in front of home plate. He wanted to appeal down to first base, but umpire said, nope, you went around. Here's right fielder Corey Brownson. He's grounded out to second baseman C.J. Townsend, both of his plate appearances today. Fastball misses wide. The top two guys in the Dakota State Lineup 
have not gotten the ball out of the infield yet today. Brownson did get credit for a run batted in. In the third inning on his infield ground out. 2-0 oh now the count. Fastball, late, foul out of play. Now two and one. Brownson from Billings, Montana. Got a text from Billings a little earlier in the game. Let's assume it's from the that his family. That one's hit well to center field. Jake Lacey near the warning track going to the left field side. He has plenty of room, however, to make the catch. And that's two outs in the inning. Two up, two down. As Ryan McDaniel will try to keep the inning alive. McDaniel from Firestone, Colorado. The catcher, Ryan McDaniel. Most of the Dakota State roster from the upper Midwest. First pitch swing, that's to the right side. Anthony Lynn has a track. The wind will blow it to his direction and into his glove. And a quick 1-2-3 inning for Dustin Shorey. And the Bellevue Bruins will come to bat in the bottom of the fifth, tied at 2-2. Two two. We mentioned in the open, these two teams have very similar records in both conference and in entire season play. Bellevue with a slight advantage in offense. Bellevue averaging 9.4 runs per game and a 345 batting average as opposed to the eight and a half runs per game and 337 batting average for Dakota State. The Trojans, however, having a slight advantage in pitching. Dakota State earned run average as a team, 3.88 for the Bellevue Ruin Bruins, 4.37. As the two starting pitchers continue their personal battle as well as their team battle, Bellevue will be looking at David, Townsend, and Lacey, the first three scheduled hitters. Four game series, one more conference series yet next weekend. The Bruins will finish the regular season here at home against Viterbo University out of Wis La Crosse, Wisconsin. But right now, the matter at hand, the Dakota State Trojans. Ryan David will lead it off for the home team Bruins. Ryan hit it well his first time up but right at the center fielder. Ryan, a big guy at six foot five, 240 pounds. So he's got some pop in his bat. First pitch fastball, foul out of play. Simon Falcon digging into the Canadian trees <laughs> from the Logan Grants family. The ingredients are in French and English. Bonjour. Another fastball, this time hits the outside corner, so Ryan down 0-2. Again, tip of the cap to all the kids listening in at Russell Middle School. Lays off the pitch. Sam Turpa tried to get Ryan to climb the ladder, but he lays off, now 1-2. Temperature in the mid-50s in the Omaha area today. A little chopper to short. Charging on the play is the shortstop, Bubba Thompson. And he gets it across the diamond to retire. David, 6-3 to three on the play. Here's Bruins second baseman, C.J. Townsend. Townsend flew out to center field. His first time up today.
Breaking ball, top of the zone, called strike one. Third year in the Bellevue baseball program for CJ, his brother Brock, a pitcher, just joined the program this year for one year of eligibility. Hit well down the right field line. That could be extra bases. Into the corner, CJ around first, on his way to second. Will he try for three? No, he will hold at second base. A nice piece of opposite field hitting by CJ Thompson, going with that outside fastball. And the Bruins have a runner in scoring position. That would be the go-ahead run. We're tied two to two. One on, one out. In the bottom of the fifth inning, here's the top of the order, Jake Lacey. Lacey with 44 runs batted in on the year. Jake the junior out of Gillette, Wyoming could give the Bruins the lead with a base hit here. Turpa comes set just above the belt. Nice job shifting to the right by the catcher, Ryan McDaniel, to block that one up. Second baseman Aiden Perry trying to keep Lind as close as possible to second base, or excuse me, Townsend. On the knees. One and one to count on the Bruins center fielder. Lays off the breaking pitch again. A nice job by the catcher to block it up, preventing Townsend from taking an extra 90 feet. Both these teams have seven wins and one loss records in the month of April. Chop foul. Don't do it, Tom. Don't do it. Let the winning team. And then play the Jake coming into today's action. 416 his batting average. Over 500 in conference play. 0 for 2 today. Lays off the outside pitch. That'll bring a full count. <laughs> Turpa looks in, gets the signal he wants. Here's the pitch. Down low and away. Tried to go with the breaking ball. Good play discipline by Lacey as he'll draw the walk to put Bellevue runners at first and second. And bring to the plate Logan Grant. But first, a visit from the dugout to talk with Turpa and the infield. Logan Grant, the hottest Bruin hitter right now. So this is a strategy session. I'm going to walk him, I think. Runners at first and second and just one out. Let's give our coaches salute. Bellevue head coach Dwayne Monlux now in his 14th year. Associate head coach Mitch Schmidt, he's been here for 18 years. Pitching coach Sean Malley for 17. And Richie Moore, the assistant coach, for 14 years. On the Dakota State side, that was Darian Hardy in his fifth year leading the program. Assistant coaches are Dan Rutan, Quentin Evers, Hakeem Yatim, and Chris Berg. All right. Bruins have a situation they like. Two men on. And their biggest home run threat at the plate, Logan Grant. Logan had a big hack on the breaking ball, comes up empty. Logan had a three home run game last weekend against Mayville State. Had six home runs on the week. And 17 runs batted in in that five game stretch. Down low. Here's where Logan has to be patient. Find a pitch that he can do something with. Don't go chasing something off the zone. Nobody throwing in the Dakota State bullpen. Logan, little jam job, but that's going to drop in fair territory down the right field side. Here comes Townsend around third base. He will score easily as Logan Grant knocks in a run. With a double, not the hardest ball he's ever hit in his life, 
but it's good enough to give the Bruins the lead. Courtesy running for Logan Grant will be Takumi Mayeno. Jake Lacey going around to third on the play, so the Bruins with two runners in scoring position and a three to two lead for Brendan Luther. For Logan, that's now 56 runs batted in on the year. That'll force Dakota State to bring the infield in against Luther. So Brendan, same situation, looking for a pitch that he can drive to the outfield. That one's fouled out of play, left side. 0-1 the count. Luther, another Bruin hitting above the 500 mark in conference play, but 0 for 2 today. Bruins with a one run lead, trying to widen that gap. Swing and a miss. That's what Turp is trying to do here. Sam Turp is trying to get the strikeout. Brendan Luther just trying to put it into play to the outfield. 0 and 2. Luther has to be more defensive in his swing here now with a two-strike count. Fly down the left field side, but that's going to get out of play. Count remains 0-2 on the Bruins shortstop out of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Turpa again looks in, gets the signal he wants. Upstairs. Takumi Miano checking where the outfielders are located. Line foul past head coach Dwayne Monlux in the third base coaching box. Fresh supply of baseballs brought in from the Bruin dugout. <laughs> Again, back to the personal battle between Sam Turpa and Brendan Luther. The one, two. Popped in the air to left field, kind of shallow. Left fielder Jeremy Green coming in, he'll make the catch. And the runner at third will have to hold because it wasn't quite deep enough to do much with. So it'll be up to left fielder Steven Elsner to try to cash in the two base runners for the Bruins. First base is open. Anthony Lynn, the next Bruin batter. So let's see how Dakota State plays this. Elsner 0 for 2. Breaking ball in the zone for a called strike one. Elsner at 4.07 in conference play. Chelsea resigned. Swings and misses at a breaking ball. Slider, nice sharp break from Turpa. 0-2 the count. And again, the Bruin batter will have to be a little bit more Protective, defensive with his swing. Down 0-2. Let's see where Turpa tries to go with this pitch. McDaniel flashes a signal. Turpa delivers. Swung on and miss. So Sam Turpa pitches himself out of a jam. The Bruins do pick up one run on two hits. There were no errors and two big runners left on base. After five innings of play in this seven-inning contest, it's the Bellevue Bruins three. And the Dakota State Trojans, too. So Logan Grant with two of the three. Bellevue runs batted in today. Tyler Monroe has the other. For Dakota State, Corey Brownson and Ryan McDaniel each with runs batted in. So five innings in the book, two innings to go. Inning and a half, Bruin fans are hoping.
Dustin Shore, he had 75 pitches through the first five innings of play, so a few more pitches than the coaching staff probably would like. Bruins try to shoot for a 12 innings, 12 pitches per inning average. That's a 15 innings per average, but Shorey is a strong kid, so let's see if he can try to navigate through two more innings of play. It'll be the middle part of the Dakota State lineup in the top of the sixth. Holtgren, Watt, and Seklik will face Dustin Shorey. Walker Holtgren to lead it off. The center fielder has been busy on defense, has struck out both of his plate appearances, however, today on offense. Center fielder, Walker Holtgren. Dustin Shorey back to work for the Bruins. On the outside, Black called strike. Shorey working ahead. Again goes outside. A swing and a miss, 0-2. Chop foul at the first base side. Count remains 0-2. Holtgren from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Opposite way down the left field side. Stephen Elsner giving chase. It's going to be a foul ball. And about two strides away from Elsner, who covered a lot of ground. Again, we apologize. Our camera is not wide enough to cover the entire field. So we put it where most of the action will be between first and third base. Elsner will head back to his spot. Luther and Great also given chase on that one. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Again, swing and a miss. Nice movement on that breaking ball for the strikeout for the first out of the inning. Six strikeouts in total, three in that second inning, and then singletons in the third, fifth, and now sixth inning for Dustin Shorey. Designated hitter Cassidy Watt is next up. Reached on an air and walked. Breaking ball off the end of the bat to center field and tracked down by Jake Lacey. Oh, the outfielders with good jumps on most of the hits today. Lacey puts that one in for the second out. And it'll bring to the plate first baseman Ned Seklik. Six consecutive retired by Dustin Shorey over the last couple of innings. Correction, first baseman, Ned Seklik. Seklik, a strikeout and a flyout on the day. Off the outside edge there on the first pitch from Shorey. Chopper off the end of the bat. That's going to be in foul territory. Oh, misplay by one of the assistant coaches. His team will give him grief. The Bellevue players are giving him grief right now. So those who can't do coach, right? Seklik from Okotoks, Alberta, Canada. One one. Now two one. Last week, these Dakota State Trojans had a series at Valley City State. They won three out of the four there. Breaking ball in the zone. Two and two now the count. Shorey seems to have more movement on his breaking ball than earlier in the game. Both horizontal and vertical movement. 
Here's the 2-2 with two away. Line hard to left field. Steven Elsner off his glove and over his head. May have got a bad read on that. Center fielder Jake Lacey gets the ball in, but a two-out base runner for Dakota State. Credit Seklik with a double on the play, a well-hit ball. Elsner came in initially, and then the ball just kept carrying, glanced off his glove, and went all the way to the fence. Good hustle by Jake Lacey to follow up, to back up on the play. And we'll have a pinch runner coming into the game. Michael Buckman. It's running at second base for the Trojans, number seven, Michael Buckman. And the Bruins will have a mound visit. A six-player conference for the Bruins, including pitcher Dustin Shorey. Aiden Perry will be the next batter for Dakota State. He's 0 for 2 today, a strikeout and a fielder's choice. I don't see any movement in the Bellevue bullpen. Or maybe someone just getting up now. As Dustin over 80 pitches on the afternoon. Number four, Aiden Perry. 86 pitches for Shorey. First pitch misses down low. Bruin infielders playing a step or two deeper than maybe what they normally would, trying to keep anything on the ground in the infield. That one way wide now, 0-2. Perry has 35 runs batted in on the season. An opportunity here with his team trailing by one. Has a big cut there, but nothing on the foul tip into the glove of Logan Grant, two and one. Swing and a miss on a nice changeup delivered by Dustin Shorey. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, three to two our score. Bruins on top. Dustin Shorey trying to get out of the inning here. He'll step off and throw to Brendan Luther. Easy toss. As the pinch runner Buckman able to get back easily on the play. Up and away, a 3-2 pitch. Buckman, the runner at second, will not be running with the pitch as there's nobody on at first. So another very critical pitch in the ball game. Upcoming here. Breaking ball. That one's hit in the air down the right field side. Anthony Lynn giving chase. And it'll be a foul ball over the fence, but foul by about 20 feet. So after that little bit of drama, we'll do it all over again. Again, it's 325 down the lines and about 380 to center field at John Stella Field at Brown Park. The batter chokes up. A little flare back in front of the plate. Logan Grant bare hands it. And his throw to first is in time to retire Aiden Perry. Two to three on the play. Nice job of jumping out quickly from behind the plate for Logan Grant. He's provided offense and some defense for the Bruins today. No runs on one hit. 
There were no errors and one man left on base. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning of this seven inning contest, the home team Bruins three, the visiting Trojans two. Conference pitcher of the year, Sam Turpa, back to the mound for now his sixth inning of work. There is action in the Dakota State bullpen, but I'm assuming that they're going to try to go with Turpa for as long as they can. 71 pitches. 71 pitches thus far in the game for Turpa. So he's in pretty good shape when it comes to his body of work on the day. He'll be looking at Lind, Monroe, and Gray, the middle part of the Bruin order. And when the Bruins take the field for the top of the seventh inning, Dakota State will have the 8-9-1 spots in their order. Dwayne Monlux hustle back to the third base coaching box for the Bruins. And it'll be a right fielder, Anthony Lynn, to start off the inning. It was Anthony who had that two-out triple in the fourth inning who came around to score on the hit by Tyler Monroe to even things up at 2-2. Two to two. The Bruins now lead at 3-2. to two. Here we go with the bottom of the sixth. Breaking ball for a called strike one. Bellevue rated number 16 this current NAIA coaches top 25 pull. Anthony puts down the bunt but fouled in the batter's box so it'll just be a strike, strike two, trying to bunt his way on board. Anthony now with 43 hits on the season in the Bruins' 42 games. That one's hit to center field. Again, the wind blowing it to the right field side, but a nice running catch out there by Walker Holtgren right in front of the scoreboard for the first out of the inning. Tyler Monroe, designated hitter. He's a perfect two for two, a couple of singles, and a run batted in. Tyler, the junior out of Lincoln, Nebraska, just down the road. Breaking ball for the called strike over the outer half. Tyler, one of the 17 players, will be honored tomorrow as part of the Senior Day festivities. Tyler will have a, a one-year career at Bellevue. Chopped on the ground to short. Tough play for Thompson. The throw is just in time to retire the speedy Tyler Monroe. Nice defensive play there by Bubba Thompson. Next up, Bellevue third baseman Nick Grade. Out the plate for Bellevue, the third baseman Nick Grade. Grade trying to keep the inning alive, add a little bit more than a one run cushion for the Bruins. Nick had a good weekend last weekend against Mayville State. 0 for 2 thus far today against Turpa. Ball one on the first delivery. Fouled out of play right side. Now 0 and 2. Or excuse me, 1 and 1. Swing and a miss. Now one and two. <laughs> Nick also will be honored tomorrow on Senior Day. <laughs> Kennewick, Washington, his hometown. A little flare to the right side. Aiden Perry will call for that. And he'll collect it to retire the side. A three up, three down, bottom of the sixth inning as we head to the seventh and final inning of the game. It's the Bellevue Bruins three and the Dakota State Trojans two in this crucial battle between the top two teams in the North Star Athletic Association. Dwayne Monlux going to talk to the home plate umpire. 
as we're going to have, looks like a defensive change for the Bruins in left field. Bryce Zimmer will head out to left field, replacing Steven Elsner on a defensive switch. Now in left field for the Bruins. What's his number? Number 12. Is number 12, Bryce Zimmer. All right, looking at who Dustin Shore will be facing in this top of the seventh inning. It's the 8-9-1 part of the order. Dawson Portner, Bubba Thompson, and then Jeremy Green at the top. The sun playing peekaboo with some of the clouds overhead today. The sun shining brightly right now. Left field at this point of the day is the sun field as it moves across the sky with this double header, it'll eventually work his way around to right field being the sun field, but right now it's kind of left and left center field. Just keep that in mind, and any balls hitting the in the air that direction. Leading it off for the Trojans, third baseman Dawson Portner. Third baseman Dawson Portner. Portner two for two today, a couple of singles and a run scored. Bottom half of the order has done pretty well for Dakota State today. Portner takes ball one. Eight-hole hitter Portner, nine-hole hitter Thompson. They were combined three for four going into this seventh inning. There's a pitch on the inside corner for a called strike. Six strikeouts on the day for Dustin Shorey. Trying to finish this off for the win and the complete game. Pitch misses a little low there, two and one. This is the 12th appearance on the year for Dustin. He has three complete games as part of his six win total. Little chopper, and that'll be foul. Fielded by Jeremy Green in the hole. Two balls, two strikes on Dawson Portner leading off the top of the seventh inning. Bruins hoping this is the final inning of today's first game of the doubleheader. Flared down the first base line, but that's going to be foul. Count remains at two and two. Nice crowd on hand today. A lot of family members in town for this senior day ceremonies tomorrow. Madison, South Dakota, only about a Three and a half to four hour drive from here. So some of their fans coming down as well. A breaking ball. Portner able to hold up and the count will go full. <laughs> Dakota State fans on the third base side trying to make some noise. Here's the three two pitch lined up the middle. C.J. Townsend gloves it, throws across his body to first base, but not in time. The speed of Dawson Portner legs out the infield hit. A bang-bang play at first, but a three-for-three three day for Portner. Dollar to a donut. We're going to see a sacrifice bunt coming up here from Bubba Thompson as Dakota State tries to get the tying run across home plate. Bruins... Hoping to make the defensive play, or if Thompson does swing away to turn a double play. Ryan David holds the base runner on it first as Shorey gets ready to face Thompson. Shows bunt, breaking ball low and away. Third baseman Nick Grade playing way inside the baseline. You can see him there just next to the support pole holding up the backstop. If Thompson does bunt, most likely try to bunt it up the first base side. Throw over to first base. Thompson does not flinch. But we'll assume the bunt is still on. Thompson won for two today. Shows bunt, does put it up the first baseline. Shorey fields it. The throw to first is in time. 
but a successful sacrifice bunt for Bubba Thompson will move Austin Portner to second base and take the Trojans to the top of the order. Here's left fielder Jeremy Green. Back to top of the batting order. Green, two ground outs to the pitcher's mound and a strikeout, so he hasn't gotten the ball more than 60 feet on the day. Green, the team leader in runs batted in, coming into today with 49. A nice fastball on the inner half that ties up Green. We've mentioned a couple of times, both Chris and I, that that's been the best location for the Shorey fastball on the day, that inside pitch tying up the right hand of batters. Throw to second base. Sweeping, breaking ball, clips the outside corner. Green does not agree with the call as he steps out for a moment. Now down. Home plate umpire flashed one and two, but I thought it was 0 oh and two. Shorey trying for the strikeout. Little chopper, that'll be foul up the third base side. Number 88 on the jersey of Jeremy Green. Not what you would normally associate as a baseball number. He awaits the pitch from Shorey. Dustin, pass Dustin up the middle, and Brennan Luther makes a diving stop to keep it on the infield. The throw back to third base is not in time. A great play by the Bruins shortstop to keep it on the infield as Jeremy Green delivers his first hit of the afternoon. Now runners at first and third as Corey Brownson will be the batter for Dakota State. Just past the glove of Shorey, Luther on the second baseman's side of second base to glove and keep it on the infield to prevent the runner from scoring on the play. Logan Grant out in front of the home plate area giving signals to the middle infielders how they want to attack this in case of a steal. Brownson 0 for 3 today, but does have a run batted in. Bruins looking to turn a double play. Dakota State trying to get a run and board. Big lead off of first base. The pitch is outside. Jeremy Green is the team leader in stolen bases with 29 on the year. Good size lead at first. Shorey sends him back with the throw. Several ways that the Bruins could handle a steal attempt. Again, the throw over. Again, Green back in plenty of time. Trying to distract Dustin from the batter at the plate, Corey Brownson. On the outside corner for the called strike, one and one. 29 stolen bases, only three caught stealing for Green. Chopper fouled into the Bruin dugout over the protective fence. One and two the count. Strikeout would be big here. Up and away, two and two.
Shorey over the 90 pitch mark. 110 to be exact. Base hit in the right field. We're going to be tied at 3-3. Three to three. Corey Bronson comes up with a big RBI single to the delight of the Dakota State fans who made the trip here to Brown Park. Dawson Portner scores on the play. And Jeremy Green advancing to second. That'll bring Dwayne Monlux out of the dugout. And that might be the end of the line for Dustin Shorey. A solid single to right field. Third hit on the inning, and that will be the end of the line for Dustin Shorey. He can't qualify for the win, but he is on the hook for the two base runners on board as his teammates come out of the dugout to greet him as he head back to the Bruin dugout. That'll bring on the first call of the bullpen of the day. Teron Williams will come out of the Bruin dugout to try to shut things down and keep it tied at three. Pinch running for Corey Brownson is Daniel Lesher. And let's find out a little bit more about the season of Teron Williams. Teron with the lowest earned run average of anybody on the Bruin pitching staff. 0.77 his earned run average. This is his 10th appearance on the season. One win, no losses. The right -hander. One save. In 11 and two-thirds innings of work, he's only allowed seven hits, one earned run, has struck out nine, and has walked one. Again, a .77, 0 0.77 earned run average for Teron Williams. Major League Baseball celebrated Jackie Robinson Day earlier this week. Number 42 that Jackie Robinson wore is now retired. That's the same number that Teron wears on his Bellevue University jersey. Teron will get his eight warm-up tosses. The junior from Belton, Missouri. Yes. Which base? First. Teron, kind of a sidearm slinger for the Bruins, has been very effective in relief over the last couple of years. A big situation for him here coming on in the top of the seventh of this 3 3 score. Two on, one out. He'll be facing the three-hole hitter, the catcher, Ryan McDaniel. McDaniel, the leading hitter. Four for four, excuse me, 444 on the year. One for three today. As Williams working from the third base side of the pitcher's rubber. First pitch, swings and misses. A nice breaking ball from Williams. C.J. Thompson trying to keep the base runner fairly close to second base. Other fielders playing in their regular spots. Outfield playing straight away. Again, the breaking ball. Again, the swing and the miss. Though Tehran keeps, jumps ahead 0-2. Let's see if Tehran goes off the place, off the plate, excuse me. First, he steps off behind the rubber on the disengagement. Three runs on eight hits for Dakota State, three runs on six hits for Bellevue University. <laughs> Williams comes set at the letters. And another breaking ball, strike three for the second out of the inning. So a big out in today's game 
but still one more to go as we'll have a pinch hitter here for Dakota State. Number 87, Cameron DeMaria. Hitting in the cleanup spot for Walker Holtgren. Pitch hitting for Dakota State, number 87, Cameron DeMaria. So DeMaria will step in here to pinch hit. He's a 444 hitter in conference play. Only his 15th game on the season, a big spot. Williams delivers its chop foul up the first base side. Demaria, a big guy, six foot nine, out of Fresno, California. Williams comes set, looks the runner back at second. Another breaking ball. He, that's been a great pitch for Tehran. And again, an 0-2 count. Tehran's been on and throwing nothing but strikes. The set, the look, and the pitch. Chop foul at the plate. Demaria stays alive. Again, the set, the look, the pitch popped up, but it's going to get out of play. Count remains 0-2. Again, Teron Williams on in relief of starter Dustin Shorey trying to pitch the Bruins out of this jam. Head coach slash ball boy Dwayne Monlex delivers some new baseballs to the home plate umpire. And we'll do it again. Low and away. Grant fakes the throw to second base. One ball and two strikes. The battle between Teron Williams and Cameron DeMaria. Chopped on the ground in the hole. Nick Gray moves that way. He'll go to second base. The short route. And the side is retired on the fielder's choice. Great job by Teron Williams to come in out of the bullpen and shut down Dakota State with two on and only one out on the inning. For Dakota State in the top of the seventh inning, one run on three hits. There were no errors and two big race base runners left on. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, which may or may not be the final inning of this game. It's 3-3, three to three, the Bruins and the Trojans knotted up. For Bellevue, the 8-9-1 spot in the order. Ryan David will lead it off, then C.J. Townsend, then back to the top of the order as Sam Turpa back to the hill. Oh, for the Bruins, Teron Williams, now the pitcher of record. He could get the win if the Bruins can scratch one run in this bottom of the seventh inning. Men's golf coach Rob Brown is now in the vicinity. <laughs> Hello to golf coach Rob Brown in the ballpark for the Bruins today. Nice crowd on hand. Kind of a cool day for middle of April. Normally it's about 65 or so is the average temperature for mid-May. It's only getting up to the mid-50s today and tomorrow. But we've got a partly sunny sky, so that's nice. The wind's not too bad. as Ryan David will step to the plate to lead it off for the Bruins in the bottom of the seventh inning. One run will end it for the home team. If not, we're going to extra innings. 
Bellevue has not won a game on a walk-off yet this year. This would be a nice time to start. Sports information guy, guru, God, Bill Mullins providing me with that stat. Here's the first pitch. David takes it for a called strike on the breaking ball. So David's 0 for 2 today. That one might get into the gap. It's hit well to right center field. However, it's going to be gloved out there. A good jump by Corey Brownson. Makes the catch on the warning track. So Ryan David hit the ball well two of the three times he's been up today. But nothing to show for it on 0 for 3. Here's Bruins second baseman C.J. Townsend. He doubled and scored a run his last time up which gave the Bruins a 3-2 to two lead. Dakota State tied it up in the top of the seventh. Pitch up and away. Turpin delivers again up and away. Turpa, 6'3", junior out of Excelsior, Minnesota. Excelsior, that's the state motto for New York State. Breaking ball. CJ turned away from it, thought he was gonna get hit, it missed him, but now a three and oh count. Bruins need a base runner. Look for CJ to take a pitch here. Top of the order awaits on deck. That's Jake Lacey. And a four pitch walk. Gives the Bruins a base runner. Takumi Mayeno will step in and pinch run for C.J. Townsend. Takumi, one of the fastest guys on the Bruins squad. The senior out of Fukuoka, Japan, comes on for pinch running duty. Takumi has only had seven at-bats on the season, but he scored 31 runs, mostly in that pinch hit or pinch running and courtesy running duties. Second mound visit of the game for Dakota State. After that conference between the catcher Ryan McDaniel and Sam Turpa. Here's Jake Lacey. Jake walk Lacey walked his last time up. Throw over to first base. Takumi with good wheels. Has nine stolen bases on the year. A little closer that time. On the head first dive back to the bag. Lacey on the bunt, back to the mound. Turpa bare hands it, the throw to first base is in time. As Maeno advances to second base, Lacey will be credited with a sacrifice bunt, one to three on the play. That'll bring up Logan Grant. And Logan with the base open at first, I'm assuming he'll be walked on a two for three day, a home run and a double and two RBIs. And it looks like they may pitch to him. And just as those words come out of my mouth, Logan will be intentionally walked. That will bring to the plate the shortstop, Brendan Luther. So two on, two outs, in a three to two game. The batting area for Bellevue, the shortstop, Brendan Luther. Who do we have courtesy running, Bill? 27. Courtesy running for the Bruins for the catcher, Logan Grant, is Samuel Fortier. Too late. So the lead runner is the one that counts. Brennan Luther with the first pitch. Comes up empty on the swing and miss. First running on first base for Bellevue, the 27th, Samuel Fortier. 
Luther 0 for 3 today. A hit could give the Bruins a victory. That one's hit the center field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Here comes the Kumi Miano. Touches the corner at third. The throw to home plate is not in time. A walk-off RBI single by Brendan Luther gives the Bellevue Bruins a 4-3 victory. The Bruins on the field storming their shortstop. Brendan Luther with a clutch base hit to score to Kumi Miano. And the Bellevue Bruins win it by a score of 4-3. Four runs on seven hits, one air for the Bruins. Three runs on eight hits and no airs for Dakota State. With the victory, the Bellevue Bruins retain their, top, their lead on the top of the North Star Athletic Association, taking game number one of this four-game set with the win. Bellevue now 31 and 11 overall, 16 and one in conference play, a perfect 16 and 0 on the year at John Stella Field at Brown Park. With the loss, Dakota State drops to 31 and 11, 14 and three in conference play. A very happy bunch of Bruins down the right field side celebrating with Brendan Luther as he delivers the two out base hit to walk it off for the Bruins. What an exciting game, a great pitcher's duel between Sam Turpa and Dustin Shorey. Turpa will take the hard luck loss. He drops to 6-3 and three on the season. Relief pitcher Teron Williams will pick up the victory in his two-thirds of an inning of work. For Williams, he is now 2-0 and oh on the year. All right. That was a nice ball game to call. Thanks again, everybody, for listening in, especially to those folks who sent along their text messages. We've got another baseball game coming your way. About 30 minutes or so from now, it's 3.05 Central Daylight Time, so probably about 3.35, 3.40, somewhere in there, we'll have first pitch of game number two. Congratulations to the Bellevue Bruins, a 4-3 victory over the Dakota State Trojans. That'll wrap it up for now. Come on back in about 30 minutes for more baseball. Mick Krupski signing off for now on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. <laughs>